Gonna make a gorgeous apple shortcake recipe, guys. I've got six Granny Smith apples soaking in water. I've cored them and just sliced them. And I've used a little slice of lemon there. Um, let's just go over the ingredients here. So I've got the recipe that I've written out for it. So we've got um, 125 grams of caster sugar, 125 grams of butter, one and a half cups of self-raising flour, and one egg. That's for the, the shortcake recipe. Now for the apples, we've got six apples there, the zest of one lemon, mixed spice, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. All these ingredients are here. So we've got our eggs and butter, lemon zest, mixed spice, sugar, brown sugar for the apples. You'll see all this come together. Let's start by cooking these apples. We want to sweat them down so that they're nice and soft for our filling. Let's get started. We're going to start by adding a third of a cup of brown sugar into our pan. Just mash that down and let that heat through slowly. Now over here I've got my apples soaking with a couple of slices of lemon to stop them from going brown. The brown sugar is now starting to soften and caramelize slightly. Let's get our apples in. And there should be just enough water coming out of those apples to add a little bit of steam, but we don't want them to be sloppy and stewed. We just want them to be a little bit, a little bit soft. And as that sugar starts to dissolve down, using a lovely brown sugar here, really nice sort of a toffee smell coming from that sugar right now. I just want to let that soften through. I'm going to add the zest of one lemon and I'm going to add a couple of dashes of this mixed spice. I'd say around about a teaspoon or so depending on how much spice you like. And then we're just going to let this cook slowly now so those apples are nice and soft. So now into our mixing bowl, we've got 125 grams of softened butter, followed by 125 grams of caster sugar. We want to cream this together until it's nice and fluffy. It should take about five minutes. Okay, that's nice and creamy. I'm just gonna crack one egg into here. And then we just want to mix that through so the egg is nice and incorporated. Start off on a slow speed and then you can just build it up. But it shouldn't take too much. There we go, that's perfect. That's just what you want. Now I'm going to just add the flour. low speed. I just want to incorporate this, bring it all together into a nice dough. There we go, just about there. As you can see it takes just a couple of seconds. And that's exactly what you're looking for. You want a nice soft dough that you can work with. So let's get this out. I want to put this into the fridge now for about 15 minutes just to sort of relax a little bit and then we can start making our apple shortcake. Uh, this, it smells absolutely beautiful. Everything's nicely caramelized. So we just want to let this cool down slightly. Um, do not add it when it's hot because the pastry will go all soggy. So push that to one side, let it cool down while our pastry is resting in the fridge. Okay, so just dust a little bit of flour. We want to turn this dough out now onto your bench. Should be a nice soft workable dough. I'm going to cut it in half. We're going to use half for the top and half for the base. So I've lined this 24 centimeter cake tin, 5 centimeters high, 24 square. And all you need to do is just put that dough into the bottom and we want to press it out so it fits our tin. So it's all nice and even. What I want to do now is just pour our apple in. 
And we just want to distribute this across with all that lovely caramelized syrup. Smells delicious. And now we can't press the other dough on top. We're going to need to roll it out and lay it on the top. So let's get that done now. Okay, so we're going to roll this out. I couldn't find my rolling pin, so I'm going to use a bottle of wine or just a, an empty bottle and just roll it out. It's going to be quite, um, this, this dough is quite uh, forgiving because you can sort of patch it up a little bit. So we're going to try and roll this out and put it over the top. Let's see if we can get it to where we, we want it. We're improvising here, people. No rolling pin. I'm using my um, Chinese chopping knife. Actually, I'm going to use two of these because it's quite delicate, this pastry. Let's see if we can make some sort of effort to get it on top. As you can see, it's very buttery. Doesn't matter. Once it's on there, you can mold it and just sort of, kind of sort of push the rest into place. It doesn't need to be perfect. It can be you know, a rustic feel to it, that's fine. You can find that it uh, does stretch out a little bit, so you can sort of patch it up a little bit. Okay, I'm using um, a piping nozzle and I'm just going to do a little bit of a pattern here. Might need to dip it into some flour every now and again. Just going to go all the way around. And of course, you don't have to do this, but you know, just adding a little bit of a, a less boring pattern to it. And it makes all those tears and blemishes kind of disappear into something that looks as if you've put a lot of work and effort into it. And of course you have. Okay, we want to put this into the oven now, 180 degrees Celsius, for around about 25 to 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown. And then we will sprinkle some um, caster sugar over the top and let it cool right down before we start to slice it. Guys, it's come out of the oven. It smells absolutely delicious. Now, the reason why I did that little pattern in the, uh, the top of it with the star nozzle from the piping bag is because it creates these little holes that um, all this super fine sugar are going to fall into. And they're going to nestle in there and create that beautiful sweetness on the top. You don't have to do this but it's just come out of the oven and this is the finishing touch. Let it cool down completely now before you try and slice it. Or if you can't wait and you just want to have custard or cream with it, go for it. It's also delicious with ice cream or as a travel snack for your lunchbox. Okay, it now has cooled slightly, enough for me to get it out of the tin and I want to put it on a cooling rack so it doesn't go all soggy on the bottom. So just remove that baking paper from underneath and then just let it cool. Okay, it's come out of the oven. It is totally cool. I just want to slice it down now. All the way through. Looks absolutely delicious. It's held together. The base is nice and golden brown. Perfectly cooked all the way through. Let's have a little taste. Absolutely delicious. In fact, bloody delicious. Give this recipe a try. Let me know how you go. And until my next recipe, have yourselves a great week. Take care and thanks for watching my channel.